Cancer is a serious disease that affects many people in the UK. But what actually causes it? Well, it's caused by mutations in proto-oncogenes and tumor suppressor genes, which lead to uncontrolled cell division. It's also estimated that there's a thousand new cases of cancer in the UK alone every single day. So it's important that we cover this area of AQAA level biology so that you're equipped with the knowledge you not only need for the exams, but also you need to understand a detrimental and significant disease that affects our society. So A-level biology, cancer. Now the image you can see on the screen here is showing some cancerous tissue. You can see here we've got a cell that's in the process of dividing via mitosis. That's there to illustrate the fact that cancer cells divide uncontrollably. You can also see that the cells are larger, unspecialized, dark and have big nuclei and you can even see it spreading into the bloodstream here now mutations in genes that control cell division are responsible for cancer so mutations in certain genes can lead to uncontrolled cell division uncontrolled cell division can lead to the formation of a tumor malignant tumors the damage surrounding tissues are called cancers but not all tumors are cancers Tumor suppressor genes stop cell division or stimulate apoptosis. Now, believe it or not, it's actually good for our cells to die because we don't want them growing out of control non-stop because that will lead to cancer. Now, proto-oncogenes stimulate cell division. So what are tumor suppressor genes then? Well, tumor suppressor genes produce proteins that stop cell division or cause apoptosis, aka programmed cell death. Remember, genes produce proteins when they are transcribed and translated. So transcription is where mRNA is produced from DNA and translation is where a polypeptide is synthesized using that mRNA. If there is a mutation in a tumor suppressor gene, this can mean that the beneficial protein is not produced and cells divide uncontrollably. This can lead to a tumor, which can either be benign or malignant. So what are proto-oncogenes next? Well, a proto-oncogene leads to the production of proteins that stimulate cell division. So tumor suppressor genes stop cell division. Proto-oncogenes stimulate cell division. And they're both good genes to have when they're functioning properly. But if there's a mutation, there's an issue. Now, when mutated, a proto-oncogene can become what's called an oncogene. Now, if we look at onco, that's where the oncology departments of cancer hospitals come from. So an oncogene is overactive and can stimulate uncontrolled cell division, or rather it can stimulate cell division when it's not needed, healthy, or appropriate. Now, this increased rate of cell division can lead to a tumor, which is an unspecialized, undifferentiated mass of cells, which can be harmful. So the types of tumor next of all. Well, first of all, cancers are a type of malignant tumor. Cancers grow rapidly and they can spread and destroy surrounding tissue. Remember, a tissue is made up of similar cells carrying out a similar function. Now, cells from a cancerous tumor can break away and travel in the lymphatic system or bloodstream. And this means they can spread to other areas of the body. Now, benign tumors aren't as much to worry about as cancerous tumors because they don't directly damage the surrounding tissues and they're usually slower growing or the spread of them stopped by some fibrous tissue or something like that. But they still could turn malignant, so it's good to get them checked out and get the advice of your GP. So identifying tumour cells next of all. Well, tumour cells have an irregular shape and I was lucky enough to be in a pathology lab at the back of a hospital in my local area and I could see slides from leukemia patients to see what cancer of the blood actually looks like. And it was striking how many white blood cells were actually in the blood sample compared to a healthy sample of blood. Now, they have a large, darker nucleus and can have multiple nuclei in a single cell. Now, that's indicating a very high rate of DNA replication and therefore cell division. Now, tumor cells have different antigens, different proteins that trigger immune responses on their cell surface membrane, and tumor cells can demonstrate a high rate of division. They're resistant to growth-regulating processes also. 
Now, tumor cells do not produce the proteins needed for normal functioning because the genes that are needed aren't necessarily switched on and the genes that are not needed are not necessarily switched off. So what are the causes of cancer then? Well, first of all, abnormal methylation of genes related to cancer can lead to the formation of tumors. What is methylation? Well, it's the adding of methyl groups, which is CH3. The methylation of DNA controls transcription and hypermethylation, meaning more methylation of tumor suppressor genes prevents transcription. Hypo, meaning low methylation of oncogenes or proto-oncogenes can cause them to function as oncogenes, which is going to lead to uncontrolled cell division. So oncogenes are not good. Now, finally, increased levels of estrogen has been linked to breast cancer because estrogen can cause the breast cells to divide and more cell division can lead to more opportunities for division. Now, it has also been said that mutagenic agents such as UV radiation, X-rays or ionizing radiation of any type can increase the frequency of mutations and therefore increase the likelihood of cancer. But there are also other risk factors such as lifestyle, for example, the diet you eat, whether you smoke or drink, and also genetic factors that can play a role. So that's everything today, guys. A really serious topic today. I hope it provided you some value and it's definitely one that affects a lot of us. So if you've learned something today, like, comment and subscribe to my channel and I will see you in the next one for more educational content. Take care, guys.